Hi, this is Josh Olson. You're watching Trailers from Hell. Uh, I really hate the whole so bad it's good thing because if a movie entertains you, it's not bad. No matter what the filmmaker's intent may or may not have been. Uh, a bad movie just lays there. Intent shouldn't matter. But sometimes you see a movie that's entertaining and so entertaining that you can't help but ask yourself, was that intentional or was it accidental? I truly do not know what the intent of the filmmakers was with this one, but I know it's ridiculously entertaining. This is live like a cop, die like a man. It's so bad it's good. Or is it? You're surrounded now. Give yourselves up. There's no way to escape. Come on out. Be sensible. Why make your situation worse? Surrender. Give me a car and I'll blow this scene and fast! When Italians started making westerns, they created an entirely new genre of film, the spaghetti western. And the world is a better place for it. But in the late 60s and 70s, they also started making movies that were an attempt to replicate the success of another American genre, the cop movie. This particular genre never resulted in its own Once Upon a Time in America, or The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, or even a grand silence but it did conjure up a bunch of really good movies. There are some pretty spiffy polizioteschis, I think I'm pronouncing that right, and Fernando De Leo was probably the best of the bunch of filmmakers who worked in the genre as a writer-director. He also had a hand in this one as the film's screenwriter. First, let's make something really clear. As my teenage niece said after watching this amazing film recently, in regards to the title, Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man, neither of the two lead characters ever actually does either of those things. The movie is either a dark, nasty pastiche of American crime films and cop shows, or it's an attempt to replicate the genre by people who don't quite seem to understand it and lack any kind of moral center whatsoever. I have my suspicions, but for every scene that makes one argument for me, there's another that completely discounts it. And I guess it really doesn't matter. It's very entertaining. It's also insanely violent. Whether you push it or stuff yourself with heroin, I don't give a damn. If I see you picking up stakes in one of my gambling joints, I'll pay you. But you go tell the police and you don't get no more. These two male model cops are on the trail of an organized crime figure who they pursue and build a case against, I guess, uh, by doing things like going to his nightclub and setting all the expensive cars outside on fire or shooting and killing his henchmen, uh, or in a particularly queasy scene, having very rough sex with his sister. This is the kind of movie that seems to believe that uh, that's all right because after one of them punches her in the face, she demands to have sex with them, both of them. The director, Ruggiero Deodato, is best known for the legendary Cannibal Holocaust, which is generally regarded as the first found footage horror film. And to make the argument that it is in fact more satire than anything else, uh, there's an incredibly trenchant and sophisticated feminist critique of male sexuality in the middle of the film. It comes from a small uh, part, a kind of Miss Money Penny character who just launches off into it. And you sit there going, oh my God, this is incredible. And she's completely right. Of course, her uh, critique sails right over the louts heads, uh, our two main characters, but it's an amazing scene. The movie clearly uh, has peck and paw on its mind. Um, there are several uh, really insanely ridiculous Bob Dylan knockoff sound-alike songs uh, that play over some of the more ridiculously violent scenes. Especially this one here you're looking at now where the uh, two leads go out to practice their shooting skills by rolling in the dirt and shooting at each other and ducking the bullets. Um, but the scene ends when the bad guys find them and our characters cheerfully kill all of them. And I mean really cheerfully. Uh, these guys really, really, really enjoy yeah. killing people. That's their boss there, played by Adolfo Celli, one of the great Bond villains from Thunderball. He's sort of that classic police cop who's com complaining all the time about the terrible things that his men do. But he keeps handing them tips to places where they can go off and wreak more havoc. I don't really have much more to say about this film. It's something you have to see to believe. Uh, but um, it does kind of stand alone as either a brilliant critique of uh, violent American crime films or a really boneheaded attempt to replicate them. I don't know. I don't care. Neither will you.